Good morning and welcome back to the course on acoustic phonetics. In fact, this is really the fag end of the program, which is which was seven modules, and this is the seventh module, the last one on instrumentation and technology in acoustic phonetics. Uh, what we have covered so far is a brief introduction to the speech sounds and uh, brief introduction to vowels and consonants, major classes of speech sounds, source filter phenomenon, the larynx as a source of voice and oropharyngeal chamber as the acoustic filter. And uh, but, but these units I must say uh, do not cover the entire range of research that has gone into the study of uh, speech sounds and there is a lot more to understand therein. But with modern technology now it is possible if you are thorough with the basics like what we have presented here in the seven modules, then you can explore the with the help of technology and go and uh, you know educate yourself further on any of the aspects of uh, speech sounds, any of the uh, acoustic aspects of uh, speech sounds. For this reason, we have included one module on instrumentation and technology in acoustic phonetics. And this will give you an overview of not just technology, but how technological advancement and acoustic developments in acoustic phonetics, they go hand in hand. And uh, a little bit of historical perspective is a good way to start with this. Um, we are not going into the ancient classical traditions of, you know, Greek or Latin or Sanskrit uh, descriptions where you have very elaborate uh, descriptions of speech sounds. We want to focus on modern electroacoustic phonetics and uh, so that the student starts from there and goes up to you know the latest that we have in the field. For modern electroacoustics, uh, we can perhaps uh, we do find references to um, 18th century talking machines and this is surprising you can explore more. There were machines where certain hand printed things could produce sounds, you know. So, talking machines, machines were synthesizing and producing uh, sounds. The, those were the earliest experiments on uh, synthetic speech. But uh, similarly, uh, we also had a source filter theory by Mueller in 1894. But source filter theory was revisited in the 20th century. And in the 20th century, we have seen more of articulatory phonetics. The articulatory phonetics fi found a lot more precision in the descriptions and uh, speech sounds were described on the basis of, you know, the laryngeal in the four processes of speech production, starting with airstream mechanism, then phonation process, then oronasal and articulatory process and very detailed descriptive uh, things were available. In the 20th century, we also find the International Phonetic Association was established, International Phonetic Alphabet, both IPA and IPA, that was also established not too far back into the history, I think 1940 or something. So, uh, IPA also brought in, you know, the phoneticians across the globe closer so that whatever language you analyze, you use IPA. If you discover a new sound, then you have to find a new symbol and that symbol is circulated amongst people by through journals and articles and finally it is included in the IPA. And that's how, you know, the International Phonetic Alphabet brought in greater precision in articulatory phonetics. There were also tools and experiments in articulatory phonetics and so on. But uh, coming back to the um, acoustic uh, phonetics and uh, we find source filter theory of speech production by Miller and this is revisited in the 20th century by Herman 1894, Fant 1960 and Fant's theory is now called linear source filter theory of speech production, very detailed and descriptive. 
then Lieberman and Blumstein 1988 and uh, based on all of this we we find that a lot of uh, empirical research has gone into acoustic phonetics to lead us to these theories and these practices, these methodological approaches. Then we have distinctive feature theory in 20th century, I do not want to ignore that because this is both phonetic and phonemic, you needed a much more precise uh, description in terms of features. So it is distinctive feature theory without making a distinction between the articulatory and the acoustic, every feature is included in the feature matrix, that was the idea. So, bringing in articulatory, acoustic and auditory phonetics together. Now, instrumental and acoustic phonetics in the past 100 years, the experimental part is uh, you can very modest, you can see the very modest beginning in tuning forks and resonators about 100 years back, mechanical recordings and vibrations, they were studied through Fourier's uh, theory and uh, then we had uh, something like experiments in physiology, physiological phonetics, uh, this is also articulatory and uh, acoustic together, chymographs and palatographs and then we had acoustic spectrometers, oscillograph and finally spectrogram or spectrograph as a machine, spectrography as a technique and spectrogram as a picture. So, chymography, begin with chymography, this was more like a cylinder which had a paper rolled onto it and covered with smoke, so that covered with soot, so that it is a very thin coating of soot and a very light moving stylus can produce marking on this. The stylus as you can see in all the three pictures is there fixed on a stand and connected to a tube, through this tube the you know the, on the other end is the mouthpiece and you speak into it and the vibrations are captured by a rotating drum. The rotation of the drum is on a fixed speed and so on. So these were some of the earliest experiments on translating the sound output or the sound wave in the shape of a, a sound wave which is drawn on, on time as x-axis. So uh, then we also come to some of the other physiology, physiological experiments or uh, call it articulatory uh, phonetics experiments where an artificial palate was created with the help of you know the dentists usually have these uh, ways of uh, making uh, you know the artificial uh, dentures and uh, artificial palates and this artificial palates were made to fit an individual and then you speak with you know um, thinly coated with oil and edible flour and uh, then you articulate certain sounds and you get a marking on that. You take that palette out and then make a copy. Now this was the earliest uh, traditional kind of uh, you know uh, palatography and the palatograms that you see here they are reproduced from uh, one of the studies references given. These are the palatograms produced uh, by me way back in 1972 in uh, the language lab of Delhi University where we used these uh, palatograms as you can see the uh, first one is a T sound a dental or pre palatal alveolar kind of a uh, sound and then dental and then retroflex and then uh, nasal sound and nasal one is down there and uh, the nasal and the dental are practically the same kind of uh, location or the place marking. Apart from these, the last three are for vowel articulations. The back part of the tongue actually touches the palate on the two sides to make a groove inside through which the resonance, resonating you know, air column is established and the air stream produces resonance. So vowels E and O and uh, the mid 
kind of central vowel he uh, in hindi speakers uh, articulation are produced there this led us to electropalatography in electropalatography now there are electrodes fixed into the palate and with that thin kind of a net which is fixed in your mouth along the palate you can mark you can get real time electropalatography which is a much further advancement on you know what we had earlier now spectrography the beginning of spectrography is by using such filters so this is a schematic sketch of filters of a sound spectrograph as used in variable speech the reference is there we have reproduced this from mamber 1963 and this idea of filters using filters to find out what frequencies are contained in the composite uh, you know complex of uh, uh, frequencies fed into it so as far as spectrography is concerned the two kinds of very you know old style spectrograms are produced here uh, this is a wide band spectrogram and this one is a narrow band spectrogram and the uh, spectrograph actually helped you get all the three acoustic features of the speech sound all the three meaning time frequency and intensity time on x axis frequencies on y axis and intensity marked as the light or dark colored lines now what you see here is one is a narrow band spectrogram which can show you the fundamental tone and the harmonics because the scanning is done very narrowly and you get at 45 hertz you can say this person is speaking at a fundamental tone of perhaps 200 and uh, the harmonics are 200 400 600 you know you can count those lines and you can identify exactly what kind of a fundamental tone what kind of voice tone frequency is used this particular figure also shows that the first vowel a long vowel has a tonal contour a pitch contour the harmonics are showing a dip in the middle so perhaps a falling rising tone or a falling tone is used in this vowel the second vowel a very short vowel probably has a high high pitch and high rising pitch it could be a question word or it could be end of the sentence it could be interrogation it could be just a word ending with a you know like a rising tone so narrow band spectrograms were used for this purpose to see visually what exactly what kind of voice variation you can see there uh, the narrow band spectrography showed you formants f1s and f2s you can see these close two formants very high up on the screen no perhaps that is the second and the third formant so the first formant should be down there the second component here is probably a fricative which is showing high frequency high intensity noise so it could be something like you know e or e beginning and s at the end probably and here e with a tone but maybe there are two different uh, words then comes uh, along with spectrography comes pattern playback we have mentioned pattern playback and speech synthesis experiments in our units particularly on vowels and consonants the previous two modules and uh, pattern playback contributed to you know hand painted spectrograms being fed into it meaning you have some hypothesis that this particular mark should be heard as this and uh, therefore that mark maybe a sound burst or maybe a ferment or maybe a horizontal line or a steady change line or something is going to make a difference in the sound produced produced so that is fed into uh, pattern playback then analysis by synthesis technique just to remind you these were the kinds of uh, hand painted spectrograms which were fed into pattern playback to find out what kind of what kind of you know 
formants are uh, there for the for the vowels. Then uh, mapping formants and articulatory criteria. A lot of experiments have also been done on vowel spaces. Vowel space is important from phonetic as well as phonological point of view. Every language has a certain range of vowels and they may be located in a smaller range or a bigger range and that is the vowel space. And uh, the measuring the vowel space can only be done by acoustic criteria. If you can identify how far down is F1, meaning how much open is the vowel and how far in front is F2 minus F1. So that gives you the front back criteria. And you put all your vowels on this kind of a uh, mapping, this kind of a graphic representation then you have your acoustic space, vowel space in terms of acoustic parameters. Then vowel spaces using Pratt or WaveSurfer or CSL, some of the vowel spaces, lot of research has gone on in our own center, a number of MPhil and PhD theses have been produced uh, working on vowel spaces across languages or the same language or disordered speech and you know speech deficits and vowel spaces and so on. So this is how you work on F1 and F2 using some of the softwares now available. But so far we are talking about spectrography, pattern playback, we haven't yet talked about the third most advanced technology, the technological advancement in the 70s and the 80s has actually changed the entire picture of acoustic research. These are computer aided tools and instruments which were you know developed, modified and um, advanced, uh, advanced, further advanced, further sophistication achieved, further uh, precision achieved by working on these computer aided tools and instruments and these softwares and some of these analysis of vowel sounds in terms of their constituent frequencies made so very convenient through Pratt or WaveSurfer or Gold Wave or CSL, many others. Similarly, all of this made, you know, consonant studies also made so much easier using these uh, softwares. K Pentex, earlier known as K Elementrix, is a research lab which has produced a number of instruments and programs for application number one in a theoretical field like linguistics and phonetics but apart from that application in forensic sciences for speaker identification speech identification application in speech pathology so all of these has been done and csl multi-speech mdvp a number of other programs are dedicated to speech and voice analysis produced by kle metrics uh, let me just run through some of these programs, tools and softwares for acoustics of speech. CSL at K Pentex, CSL is Computerized Speech Lab, Multi-Speech at K Pentex, VisiPitch again K, MDVP is Multi-Dimensional Voice Profile, which at once gives you at least 30 to 30, 35, 34 acoustic parameters and measurements in in a second and uh, which is very useful for voice analysis and many other applications in speech pathology and forensic phonetics. Pratt is a software which is used by students across the globe, you know, all over the world and developed by Paul Bursman of uh, Department of Phonetics, University of Amsterdam, very popular program and uh, which, allow, which allows uh, phoneticians to analyze, synthesize, manipulate, maneuver speech in so many different ways. Wave Surfer is another one. Gold Wave is a digital audio editing software which with various graphic visuals including the spectrum and uh, spectrogram. Gold Wave, uh, our students have been using this very successfully for noise reduction in sound samples which have been recorded because you don't record uh, uh, speech in ideal conditions. Most often you go to the field and you are recording 
speech in not so good recording condition. So a lot of noise is there, even if it's a quiet kind of a place, the background noise can be yeah, a nuisance. So that uh, noise reduction, Goldwave does very successful. Other, other softwares also do, but Goldwave does it very well. And uh, then uh, Sensimetrix uh, Speech Station, SSS. This is a computer speech research environment, speech lab and specto as discussed in Pickett 1999. These are the tools for speech lab and specto are tools for speech analysis. So this uh, S, uh, S station compatible for Windows is used for standard spectrographic analysis. And um, it also helps in reading frequency values and uh, time duration and various other, other features. Audacity is another easy to use but a very powerful audio recording tool which also helps you, you know, getting the wave, wave form in MP3 files and then, uh, you know, the, uh, recording and playing of the sounds and multi-track mixing and uh, various noise removal as well. So recording and editing package which is extremely useful in uh, phonetic research. Uh, friends, uh, as we end this uh, um, uh, section on uh, acoustic phonetics, these seven module set, I uh, would again uh, reiterate my point that this is not all. A lot more research is on in the field of acoustic phonetics because once we found the right kind of you know tools and instruments and softwares then it's so much easier to explore and find out the finer details of the speech sounds maybe consonants and vowels and liquids and glides and all of these sounds and uh, work on those for various objectives. The objective may be descriptive or objective may be cross-cultural, cross-linguistic comparisons. Objectives may be the individual voice and speech analysis for purposes of, you know, pathology or finding the speech deficit or uh, forensic purposes and so on and so forth. So the list is endless, the work is endless, the field is open to speech scientists and linguists and phoneticians and uh, neurologists and cognitive scientists and so many others, uh, speech technology people and uh, speech synthesis uh, for, for helping the public in popular uh, softwares and so on. So the, the area is now has grown really, really vast with the latest technological inputs. So um, I wish you the very best, uh, enjoy your phonetics research and continue to, uh, you know, dabble through various other phonetics uh, research articles and the softwares and the tools and uh, help yourself once you have the basic information uh, clarified through these uh, seven modules. Thank you very much.